Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here. I would like to thank the Medical Physics for World Benefits and also to COMP Annual Meeting Committee uh, for letting me speak at this session. Uh, my name is Victor, and I'm Assistant Professor and Medical Physicist at University of Texas, uh, Southwestern Medical Center. And uh, I'm Ukrainian-Canadian uh, who was born in um, USSR, uh, but raised in the free Ukraine. And a couple of years back, I was looking into opportunities um, to get involved in a global cancer care. And has this wish ever came true in 2022, uh, unfortunately. Uh, as you know, Russia um, started an unprovoked war with Ukraine in February this year. Um, and this war is characterized by brutality that has shocked the world. Um, as this war uh, goes on, many Ukrainian uh, cancer patients are simply waiting to die because um, critical infrastructure is destroyed, uh, supply chains are uh, disrupted, and there are significant uh, issues with staff. So to support Ukraine um, in this battle against cancer, an international team of uh, multidisciplinary oncology professionals um, with Ukrainian roots um, was organized, or I better say we found each other after a couple of iterations, and we have been working on some projects, um, and this presentation will tell about some of those. So to get a better idea about what's happening in Ukraine and what is needed, uh, so we reached out to our colleagues there. And one of them is the president of Ukrainian Association of Medical Physics, uh, uh, Ruslan Zelensky. And he has recorded a message for this session about medical physics in a wartime Ukraine. So the word is to Ruslan. Um, my name is Ruslan Zelensky and uh, I'm a medical physicist uh, from Ukraine from a big and uh, wonderful country located uh, in Eastern Europe. And uh, I want to start from uh, 2014. Uh, you can see the map of Ukraine with marks. Uh, red marks indicate uh, radiotherapy centers with cobalt-60 machines and uh, blue marks with uh, linear accelerators. In total, uh, 52 hospitals, uh, 86 uh, cobalt-60 machines, and uh, 20 linear accelerators. Um, of course, uh, we had a many challenge, uh, low number of uh, linear accelerators, uh, uneven uh, distribution of equipment across regions, uh, need to formalize uh, medical physics trainings and education, and um, I remember that uh, there were many plans and ideas uh, for development. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, war uh, interfered uh, with our lives and plans. In uh, 2014, uh, three regions of Ukraine were annexed. Uh, one in the south and uh, parts of uh, two regions in the east. I marked them uh, with a black line on the map. Uh, Ukraine uh, lost control of 10 hospitals, uh, provided radiotherapy services uh, with uh, free uh, linear accelerators and uh, 15 cobalt-60 machines. But uh, despite uh, all the difficult, uh, constant uh, hostilities in East of Ukraine, uh, we did our best for development. In uh, 2017, the Ukrainian Association of uh, Medical Physicists uh, was established, uh, which has already become a member of a form. Uh, from uh, 2014 uh, to uh, 2021, uh, 16 Linux uh, were put into operation and uh, 5 was uh, under installation in the end of uh, 2021. Uh, also, the uh, Ministry of uh, Health of Ukraine initiated uh, the purchase uh, of an additional 20-25 uh, Linux. Um, as you see, we have had the tendency to upgrade our equipment uh, in recent years and uh, we were ready to continue actively. Uh, but uh, unthinkable happened. A uh, full-scale war uh, began on February 24. Uh, Russian troops uh, invaded from north, east, uh, and south, uh, and this uh, greatly affected the status of uh, radiotherapy in Ukraine. Um, in the first weeks, uh, most cancer centers suspended radiotherapy. We didn't know what to expect next. Uh, people began to migrate to Western Ukraine and abroad, uh, included patients, of course. 
Uh, in uh, mid-March, uh, active occupation of our lands was stopped by Ukraine army and uh, the occupied territories uh, are outlined by a black line on the map. Uh, almost uh, all radio therapy centers in and near Kyiv uh, didn't work. In. Uh, two centers in the south were completely occupied. Uh, radio therapy centers in the central and west Ukraine resume work uh, despite the risk of uh, missile strikes. Until uh, mid-April, uh, areas near Kyiv and in the northeast uh, were liberated. Uh, many hospitals resumed radiotherapy services, uh, especially in Kyiv, uh, where 20 uh, external beam radiotherapy machines are located. Uh, this is uh, half of the total in Ukraine. At the moment, uh, three hospitals uh, suspended radiotherapy due to equipment damage, uh, as in uh, Chernihiv, or uh, proximity to hostilities, as in Kharkiv and uh, Kramatorsk, uh, uh, marked by red arrows. Uh, two centers marked with blue arrows uh, work under constant shelling. Uh, three hospitals uh, under occupation from uh, 2022 and uh, 10 hospitals under occupation from 2014. In total, uh, it about 30% of radiotherapy facilities cannot provide therapy for Ukraine patients now. And now we want to show uh, a few examples uh, to fully understand uh, what has happened in, now in uh, our hospitals. Uh, this is uh, Ahmadid Children's Hospital in Kyiv. Uh, CT simulators uh, are used for trauma injuries. Mikolaev Regional Oncology Center's uh, medical physicist shows the fragments found near the hospital. Each of them uh, could have been caused by this uh, if it gets into people instead of glass or wall. Kharkiv uh, Regional Oncology Center damaged by shelling uh, that continues to this day. Destroyed walls, ceilings, uh, broken windows and doors. Um, this is our reality. Mariupol Cancer Center uh, completely destroyed, uh, stuff in tears, don't need any comments. <laughs> this is example from my, my Spezhanko clinic. Uh, you can see how the fragments uh, broke through the wall and uh, destroyed the treatment planning system uh, for CyberKnife Accurate Company. Only one treatment planning system and several windows. Uh, this is minor damage compared to completely destroyed supermarket, for example, located uh, 150 meters from the my department. I should be happy about it, uh, but uh, I cannot be. Uh, I, I will never say hello to our nurse again because uh, she was killed uh, not far from my hospital. Many patients uh, cannot start or complete their treatment on time. Um, yes, um, they were not killed directly by bullets, missiles or bombs, but uh, each of them lost weeks months or maybe years of life uh, due to incomplete or missing treatment because uh, someone in the 21st century is starting a war. Think about it, please. This is our group. It is led by Natalia Kovalchuk, who is a physicist in Stanford. Um, Roman Kovalchuk is a resident in Mayo Clinic. Um, Nella Miltonchuk is a physician in Harvard. Uh, Ruslan Zelensky, medical physicist in Ukraine, and Natalka Shurchevatska, medical physicist in Australia. In the very beginning, it was important for us to realize uh, the scope and also some challenges um, that are faced by um, oncology professionals. That is why we reached to our colleagues um, just to ask uh, what's happening. So, um, particularly, we interviewed Andriy Beznosenko. Uh, Chief Medical Officer of Ukraine's National Cancer Institute, 
um, and as a result, we published uh, a paper in Advances uh, in Radiation Oncology. So the interview was happening at the time when uh, Russians were um, about to um, encircle Kiev. So um, some of the stories were uh, pretty shocking. On these pictures, you can see uh, the basement of uh, National Cancer Institute, and uh, this ba basement has become also a bomb shelter for the patients and staff. Um, at that time, cave was under constant aerial attacks, so some staff um, just decided to stay at work. Uh, it was safer that way, just not to move around on the city. Um, so you can see there is um, uh, pediatric patients and adult patients um, just simply in the hall, and then. Uh, uh, staff was preparing the intravenous solutions um, just in the in the in, in the basement just nearby. According to Ministry of Health of Ukraine and Dr. Beznosenko, uh, about 89% of national cancer centers in Ukraine were providing chemotherapy and uh, surgical cancer treatments. 36% of those providing surgical services were providing it in urgent settings only. About 71% of national cancer centers were um, were able to provide uh, radiotherapy services. Um, at the same time, uh, the government of Ukraine banned the export, import, transportation, and use of radiopharmaceuticals uh, during the war. So, um, therefore, NUCMED departments across the country uh, did not conduct diagnostics or treatment procedures. Um, also, uh, supply chains were disrupted and uh, staffing issues and due to evacuation um, and dislocation um, also some uh, staff um, uh, immigrated as well so um, at the same time there was also equipment uh, in some um, cancer center that were installed and simply not commissioned um, because um, vendors withdraw their field engineers so we we're looking into ways of uh, helping with that one according to ukraine's minister of health more than 500 medical facilities sustained damages from shelling or missile attacks, of which 40 were uh, completely destroyed beyond repair. Also, there was recorded more than 60 instances of firing on ambulances. Um, the hospital infrastructure is damaged for years to come, even if the war would end today. Um, and this is a pretty significant hit on the healthcare system. So, so what can we do to help? Um, we ask for help. We ask for help for um, U.S. hospitals um, to send medical supplies to Ukraine and Stanford and Mayo um, actually sent um, a very significant amount. Um, um, Stanford students together with Nova, uh, Nova Ukraine uh, shipped about 80 tons of 4 million worth of emergency care medical supplies to Ukraine. But also we asked vendors to help. Um, radiation oncology centers in Ukraine in a, in a central part and also on the west, uh, they're lacking disposable immobilization devices and boluses. And we petitioned uh, Civco and Orphid to donate those supplies, and they were actually pretty responsive. Uh, the first batch of boluses is actually on the way to Ukraine right now. We also petitioned Tavarian Siemens um, to um, support Ukraine with resources and training, and Siemens um, also donated three X ray systems and four C arms to various locations in Ukraine. As well, we petitioned Limbus AI to help with auto contouring in uh, busy RT centers. And uh, we're calling on vendors to donate a major uh, diagnostic equipment to the hospitals on the west of Ukraine. We call all uh, radiation therapy vendors to support Ukraine uh, because um, whatever help is coming, um, one time donation will not be enough. Uh, there has to be a flow. Um, supply chains are not uh, coming back anytime soon, um, so we need to be ready to um, help supply the cancer patients. We interview physicians and physicists a lot to record everything they've experienced. Also, we realized pretty fast that there were two main categories of challenges. First one, due to lack of supplies, and the second one, due to lack of staff. When people immigrate, they most of the time don't practice their old uh, profession, which of course impacts their qualification. So to help preserving staff, we ask cancer centers and hospitals in North America and Europe about the opportunity for women um, professionals to come for short-term observerships or fellowships. And uh, we're talking about women only because there is martial law in place and men must stay inside Ukraine. 
In the long term, we see addressing uh, these same two main categories in a more strategic way due to international collaboration and partnership. And uh, below you see there is a progress of how we're doing so far, and we're pretty far. Um, we need more international community help. We need your help as well. Uh, especially now that across the board and in the news, people start adapting to war in Ukraine, and this is not okay. More help is needed. This is my last slide, and I would like to finish on a positive note. So this is my daughter, um, and she's in that age when she puts a cloak and running around and says that she's a superhero. So when I say, okay, you're a superhero, what's your superpower? And her answer is, I'm Ukrainian. So she's very small, but still she's like all in that mood um, of belief and uh, and faith uh, that uh, Ukraine will win. And I'm telling you, like Ukrainians in Ukraine, they are very confident they will win um, on many fronts and we can help them win on the cancer battle front. So if you have resources, if you have will and if you have time and expertise, please reach out. Uh, we need your help. Thank you.